And we are live, my brother. Uh, I got Colton Lindsay, man. Welcome to the show, dude. How are you doing, man? Dude, I love my life. I'm full of gratitude and I'm excited to be here, adding some value to anyone's life that's listening. So thank you for having me. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, man. Well, listen, you know, usually I, I, I do this show and I talk to agents who are in, in kind of a transition in their life as it relates to, you know, um, you know, being at one company or being at another. And I, I do talk um, kind of exclusively uh, to EXP agents, but I wanted to talk to you because, um, well, number one, I followed you on social media for a long time and I, I so appreciate what you do for the realtor community. But number two, is you had kind of a unique story, man. And um, I'm hoping we can dive into that a little bit. And then what I found oftentimes that happens is, is sometimes in that moment of defeat or that moment of, uh, of, 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 you know, kind of some of the bigger challenges we're having in our life, they ultimately end up being kind of the springboard that, um, that led to something eminently better. And I, I feel like that that's kind of what's happening in your life. So I'm hoping you're interested in sharing that. Absolutely, man. Yeah, let's get into that. Um, I think that, listen, challenges are really our biggest blessings. They're really God's grace that give us an opportunity. If you think back clear from the time you were born, your biggest pains were what allowed you to stretch and to grow and to create you in what you are today. So I look at the whole situation with EXP as twofold. One is it really challenged me to focus on who I am and my values are. And then although they didn't line up with the executives of EXP, I didn't question my values the entire time. Like I fucking know who I am and what I stand for and what my purpose is. And I'll look you in the eyes. I'll tell you what I'm about. If you don't like it, fuck you. It's not my problem. I'm going to go on with what my goal is. But at the same time, I recognize there's a huge opportunity to financially uh, for sure with EXP. And if anyone doesn't see the writing on the wall with that, then, then their heads up their ass because there really is a huge financial opportunity there. And so there was a little bit of this heartbreak. That's like, how the fuck did this happen that I'm not, like, I mean, I see other people like a good friend of mine, Brian Casella. I've seen Jay Kinder. I've seen, um, shoot, what's the dude from, from Real Estate Uncensored up uh, in, in California? Yeah, Greg McDaniels. Yeah. And I see these motherfuckers on there and I see their language and I see the things they talk about and I see what they're doing on their social media. Here they are, part of the XP. I'm like, something doesn't fuck make sense. However, God works in, in different ways. And he's, he lied and he said, no, this is not for you. It doesn't, it's, it's whatever reason that your values don't line up and that's okay. But what is the opportunity that stems from? And today I see it more clearly, which is, I don't know, eight, 10, 10 months down the road since this whole thing happened. And I wasn't, was banned from the company. But what is the opportunity? What allowed me to get away from Keller Williams, first of all? And I don't know that I would have made that decision right away. Not that Keller Williams is a bad company, but there's only so far you can grow with inside of that organization before you kind of roll into, I don't know, just just sucked right into their vortex of, of doing things their way all the time. And that's kind of with any company. But since then, I've, we've launched our own company, which is Refined Real Estate. We've grown the WGR brand even more. It's allowed me to speak even more of my voice on what I stand for. And it's attracted and helped a lot of people. Um, Refined Real Estate is a really cool opportunity for us because now it gives me an opportunity to build something that I can sell. Whereas I know you can sell a real estate sales team. But the value that you're going to get out of a sales team versus a brokerage is different. Now I can attract thousands of agents nationwide over the next five to 10 years and sell that for a multiple versus if I just build my sales team, I'll sell it. But it's, it's I'm not going to really generate a ton off of that. But I think more than that, it boils down to my life and my experiences and my pains that have created me actually are huge lessons for other people as well. I mean, how many, I can't tell you how many realtors call me on a weekly basis, Mike, that they're talking to me about their addiction to porn or to Oxycontin or to drugs or to alcohol or they're cheating on their spouse or they have a terrible marriage or whatever. And here I am constantly talking about the challenges that come along with life and business and my own challenges that I've dealt with. But I think that's really what I'm here for is to help people say, you know what, you're not alone. You're going to have challenges. In fact, these challenges are your blessings when you decide to see it that way. Isn't that interesting, man? Because it's like, okay, so that, so, so that totally like gets my wheels turning when you talk about like, you're serving in a different way. You know what I mean? You talked about uh, alignment and, and <laughs> values. And, and so maybe, maybe that is true, man. It, it sounds like God does have a different plan for you. And so if you're ultimately still, you're still serving the realtor community, you're just, you're, ser you're coming from a place of servants that, and you're, you're helping people. Uh, it's just in a different way. And so 
let's rewind the tape just a little bit, man, because uh, yeah. I just want to give our audience some context. Well, uh, one, one thing that I want to say along that as well. So I remember, and I think, I can't remember her name now. I think it's Vicky Bartholomew is the president of the company, yeah, if, I, yeah. if I remember right. Super great lady. I had several good conversations with her. I, mean, I spoke with a lot of great people in the company as we worked through this. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I tried to help her understand, and I, I hope that the company of EXP is starting to understand this, is that there is a whole new movement wave, a new generation that coming up that is, as much as I love Vicky and, and, and I think, you know, it's Mr. Stanford, Stanford or whatever that has started the company, they cannot relate to someone that's 30 fucking four years old in today's world or even 25 years old because when they were that age, it was a whole fucking dimension, a whole other world, right? Like they can't even connect to that world. And there's a section of the real estate community that are as extremely as valuable as the other side of the real estate community. It's, it's, it's the misfits. It's the hustlers. It's the people that haven't had a peachy, amazing fucking life every step of the way. They've had to literally work through shit, whether it was just shit that fell on them or shit that they created themselves. Because I know if you're like me, I am guilty of some really bad consequences in my life because of the choices I made. Yeah. Yet we can't throw those people by the wayside. We have to be there for them to really create that lighthouse to say, hey, there's way more for you in this life. And EXP is a vehicle to do that. But if they shut out that part of the real estate community, they'll never reach the heights that they want to be able to, to reach as a company. And I think that with time, leadership will develop through the EXP organization, but that has got to happen. And unfortunately, like I believe I could be a strong leader for that company. Unfortunately, I think I'm just too early for it in the company, believe it or not. And that doesn't stop me from helping the people that truly need the help that I connect with. Because if I wasn't the way I am, if I wasn't going on Facebook and social media, my podcast and, 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 and going how I am right now, there would be people missing out on the opportunity of that connection and the ability to shift and believe in themselves. And it's not fair to those people. For sure, man. And so let me ask you this, because where I want to make the connection for you is like, um, you. Got, when did you get into real estate, man? Because you're still a young guy. <laughs> I got in, I got my license October 2005 when I was 21. Okay. So you got, I mean, you you literally got right, you dove right into it. And talk, talk about like in 2001, um, um, or talk, to talk, just talk about like when you, how you got in and then talk about what happened as soon as you got in. Great. So it was October 2005. I was 21 years old. Uh, I felt miserably for the first 10 months. I sold two houses. One was my sister's and one was, if you remember the market, for those of you that were in real estate in 2005, the market was booming. New construction was hot and I was on floor time. If you know what even floor time is, I, I, I mean, floor time is ridiculous now, but I was on floor time. Someone walked in. I showed him a, a house that was a new build on the MLS. I called the guy that had literally just came and did a thing at our sales, um, sales meeting sent him over, wrote up the contract. So that was my two deals in, in the first 10 months. Then I went to a special event with the first mentor that really changed my life uh, with Fearless Agent is Bob Leffler. I did exactly what he said in the next year. I did just over 20 deals. I did more, but the next year I did over 30 and so on. With about uh, four or five years into it, I was generating $400,000 a year working four or five days a week. Um, there was part of a challenge in between there I mean, I was, re I did get really heavy into drugs and alcohol and sex and partying. And I always joke that I wasted all my money on drugs and alcohol, or I spent all my money on drugs and alcohol and wasted the rest, right? But the truth is, is I wasn't a good steward as I was making a ton of money. And, and as my life evolved, I then got married. I had my first daughter and that's when it hit me, right? Like that's when it really hit me. Like the, what, like, what am I really here for? And, and, and I started to go at a new level for my kids. Uh, until where I'm at today. And even this year, this whole year was a complete fuckery of challenges for me. I got banned from EXP. Uh, I lost two of my biggest players in my organization, not because it was a bad thing. They just moved on to other things in their lives. I got, I went through a divorce, which was just horrible, catastrophic. No one wants to go through a divorce, but yet here I am in 2000 and what year are we now? 2018. And my, my revenue will be as good or better than it was last year. I'm touching more people's lives. I'm owning myself even more. Um, so that's kind of a nutshell of my journey of where we're at. You know, I went from doing nothing and to where this year, I think my revenue will be roughly 700K. So that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, that's that's a lot to unpack, dude. So you, you've uh, 34 years old, man, and you've just, you've uh, had so much life experience. What are like, 
give me some of these, like what I really want to dig into is like some of these, some of these things that have happened in your life, um, the drugs and alcohol, um, being banned from EXP. Like what, what are you, it's not, it's not really about what you do. It's about who you become. Right. And so I want to know, like, I want to know about who are you becoming because of all this? Well, for me, it's, I've really realized, like, if I look at the brand, the WGR, I'm attracting a tribe. There's a, a level of people that are interested in my message and what I have to say. And, and it's, what's the message though? For me, it's really boils down, boils down to make a difference. And then I have to take that message and deliver it over and over again. But what has allowed me to even get to that point where that's what I want to do? That's what my purpose is. When I die here on earth, why is it that I want to have made a difference? And I, I look at so many times throughout this process, why was I in drugs and alcohol? Why was I partying? Why was I making some of the choices I made? And it boiled down to I was just simply unhappy on the inside. It's what I call the shame factor. I believe society is for whatever reason, whether it was the religion you grew up in, the school you went to, the neighborhood you grew up in, we begin to believe that we're not good enough, smart enough, strong enough, whatever. We make up this bullshit story that we're not that great. But then there's this other side of it, of, of which is different than shame. It's called guilt. The difference between the two is guilt is I did something bad. Shame is I am something bad. And unfortunately, because of the choices, oftentimes, and I did this, is I began to believe I was something bad not that I just did something that wasn't that great. You follow me here a little bit? And so how people deal with shame, and this is how I dealt with it. There's one of four ways. One is people will attack themselves. They beat themselves up like, I should have done this. I should have done that. Why am I not further along? Till the worst thing that a person can do to themselves is commit suicide. Look at today's suicide rate. Look at celebrities that are committing suicide. Look at that, that guy, number one Keller Williams agent in California earlier this year, crushing it with his business, committed suicide at the age of 45. In fact, the highest suicide rate in today's, uh, in the United States is the 45 year old white male. What does that have to say? 45, they're in the middle of their career, they've got a lot of pressure on them, they're trying to produce results and it gets to them, right? They start to believe I should be further along or I'm not doing enough. The other way people deal with it is through by attacking others, whether emotionally, physically, verbally, to the worst thing and you can see in society is kill people. Look at the mass shootings that we're seeing today. Where it's very, very common though, is people withdraw. This is especially common with women. They will withdraw, they won't talk about it, and they will hold that stuff in. Where it's even more common for men and women, especially in the real estate community, this is what I'm so committing to helping people do is change the identity from shame to an identity of love that I am enough and how to take the challenges and what, what Gary Vee calls the shit dick and start to love the process of who I'm becoming. Not trying to get there one day, but what people do is they get addicted to drugs. They get addicted to alcohol, pornography, sex. Now it's social media. Now it's online shopping. They are constantly trying to distract themselves from the, the, the inability to sit still with themselves because they're so full of shame. They don't want to face that pain. But if we can learn to face that pain, it will pass through us and we will find out that the time that I was tripping on four grams of mushrooms or a thousand grams of peyote, or I, I was pulled over and, and, and had to blow on the breathalyzer or whatever it is, right? We can find out that way. I, that had to happen for me to make a decision to shift my destiny. I had to be able to experience that because if I didn't experience that pain, I couldn't have been stretched. I couldn't have been molded. I couldn't have grown. And, and that's why I'm so passionate at looking at, at my challenges, my circumstances that happen because of my choices that I want to impact the real estate community even more. Yeah, dude, that's, I mean, I can, like, I don't, I talk to a lot of people. I mean, you know that. And, um, like for a 34 year old dude, I mean, you, you got your shit together for sure. Like, and, it, and it's because of the experiences in your life. Uh, and, and let me preface that by saying it's because you've learned from the experiences mm -hmm. in your life. There are there are many people who just continue to repeat the same experiences over and over and over again until they die. And you've obviously um, you've used this to create positivity uh, and, 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 a, and some form of grace in your life. And, and that now you're able to share that with others. So essentially, these you've had all these great experiences are these what we've considered what, what society would consider terrible experiences. But ultimately, they, they, they will be your greatest victory because of what they're molding or shaping you into as a human being, correct? 100%. God's greatest gifts, his grace is that pain. His grace is when, when we're in the midst of the suffering because that's the opportunity for us to choose to continue to suffer 
or to choose the blissful state. I mean, think about you guys watching live or replay. Were not your greatest learning opportunities at the time felt like the biggest shit storm of your entire life? I don't want you to try and figure out how to get past the pain in your life. I want you to learn how to love the pain, how to be the eye of the storm, to stay calm, cool, and collect no matter what shit storm is going on around you. Once you can discover that, then you've got the ability to make choices based on your emotions, on what allows you to elevate to love, to peace, to joy, even to enthusiasm and excitement. However, I want you to take inventory of this. How often are you walking through life either numbed out because the pain's so fucking strong or you feel anxious, you feel frustrated, impatient, full of doubt, even to where we hear a lot of people that are living in a state of powerlessness and depression and jealousy and hate and anger. And this is what drives us to attack ourselves and commit suicide. This is what drives us to attack others. This is what drives us to be addicted to some sort of drug. But you got to learn to live with the pain. Otherwise, you'll never actually grow to that sense of love that you are built to be. Yeah. And so here's what I want to know from you, bro. Um, yeah. Because a lot, you know why a lot of people are attracted to you? It's because you're willing to be transparent. And 99.9% .9 of society is not willing to tell the stories that you're willing to tell about yourself. But they don't understand that if they would be that way, they could ultimately, when you talk about um, shame and guilt and holding it in, that's how you release it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so this is your conduit for a release of shame or guilt, right? Because for sure. you're coming from a different place now. You're coming from a place of, uh, uh, you're, it's a servant mentality. It, it's from a place of abundance and giving. And the people that hold it in, you know, a lot of times they don't, you don't even see them on video because they're telling themselves that same narrative that they're not enough, right? Right, exactly. And I'm, in fact, because of those experiences I've had, I am more than enough because I know that there's people out there, Mike, that need to hear this story, that need to hear, listen, dude, if Colton can be high on four grams of, of mushrooms and have life flight flown in and be taken to the emergency room and, and then charged with public intoxication. And like, if, if he can experience through that and actually learn from it and grow, well, what about the stupid shit that I've done or that I've been through? And those are just examples of my own choices, but there's other choices that, that aren't ours that we make. Maybe it's a health a medical issue that a family member is going through. Maybe it's a loss of a loved one. I mean, how many people have lost a, a close person in their life through death, right? These are things that, that, that people get stuck in the pain and I just want to help them release that. I want to help end their suffering because I know you can go make money. Money is so easy to make. And in fact, that's all I do is help people make money. But beyond that, our greatest failure is success without that fulfillment. I want to help you have fulfillment today not three years from now, because if you're waiting to be fulfilled in the future, you're never going to receive it. It's always going to be in the future. Right. So talk about like for you, obviously getting into real estate at 21 and having success um, right away and, 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 and getting um, essentially everything you wanted. Right. I mean, you, when you have money, it creates opportunity, right? Whether it's for good or bad, it's still yeah. creates opportunity. And so for you, it created this opportunity, um, where now we look back and we know it was, it was, it was right. And everything happened as it should. But at the time, um, you know, before you went through it, you, you, you still made the decision to go through it. And, it, but talk about like, why do you think you made those decisions to, to accept that lifestyle? Do you think it was because you had to? Uh, I don't think you have to ever accept anything. I, just, here, I mean, it, you, do, I mean, do you have, did you have to make those decisions to get to this point in your life? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but I did, it did, did, did get me here. Right. So I'm grateful for that. But I do know that if I'm making, if, if I get stuck in those decisions and I hold on to the past, that's what causes fear and anger and, and depression. And the only way to be able to move on to the future is to surrender and accept and be okay with what is, even if it's not what I want. Like I didn't want Vicky and Jason and all those guys that tell me, listen, dude, Colton, you know what we want? We kind of want you the company, but we're a little afraid of what you're going to look like as an appearance wise for the EXP organization inside of the state of Utah. I didn't want Rick, the local broker here to say, Hey, listen, your social media is not a fit for our company. I didn't want to hear that shit, but it was what it was. And I had a choice to make at that time. And Vicky said, listen, kind of your job is to, to dumb down or water down your social media as a professional. 
And maybe that was how business was done 30, 20 years ago. And I was like, fuck that. That's not who I am. It's like I said earlier, I'll look in the eyes and tell you who I am. And if you don't like it, fuck you. That's your problem. It's not my problem because there's people's lives that I was going to impact. But looking back, had I dumbed down my social media and really been a part of EXP, I guarantee I would have made a ton of money inside of EXP. But what I wouldn't have done is I wouldn't have had people call me, tell me about their opiate addiction or how they just cheated on their wife or how their marriage was on their last leg. And I wouldn't have been able to help those people break through. Making money is not that fucking important. It's yep. helping people. It's making a difference. It's way important. By the way, money's not even real, guys. Money's not real. It creates opportunity and it comes abundantly and it comes frequently. And that's only if you create your belief that way because it's not real. What is real is your experience in this moment. Yep. And so, so talk about specifically like when you um, let, let's we're, we're going to really dig into like the whole EXP thing like that. Like you, you obviously made a decision at some point that I, this is the route I'm going, right? Like. I, I've done my due diligence and at this point in my business, it's the right move to go to EXP. And so you make that decision and then walk me through what happened after that. So I'll tell you the reason why I made that decision to go to EXP. A good friend of mine, you probably know him, AJ Maida, and who's crushing it with the company right now. He's very successful. He'd been talking in my ear for a while about it. And then I did as I took my, my profit tree from Keller Williams and compared it to what it would be at with EXP, which was about at the time, about 50, 55 people in my downline. And, and the difference, I made like 32, 3,600 bucks that last year with my downline in 2017. And I was like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> why am I not with EXP with my social influence reach and what I'm doing online? The, the payment would be ridiculous on the money side. So we made that we made that decision. And I was kind of getting fed up with the whole Keller Williams scene. I felt like it was a big fucking ego trip of look at how big my expansion team is. Look at me. I'm doing awesome. And no offense to people in, uh, in Keller Williams. That's just kind of how I felt. I felt it was more about the ego than it was making a difference. So we made that decision. We went over. We literally had our signage put together. We had come over to our new office space because I still believe the office is important for us. Um, and we went to rock and roll and we were just waiting for the final application to come back. My whole team had moved over. In fact, I even had one of the, the I had two top 1% realtors in our marketplace ready to come over as well. We had the whole plan to, to open up the Utah market. And, um, you know, because of that, she didn't join the company either. She's a, she's, she's a lot like me and yet she's in the top 1%. Her story is fucking unreal. Like, I mean, addicted to drugs, um, just crazy other shit that she had gone through. And, and we really felt that we could make a difference for a lot of people. So when this happened, I then got a phone call all ready to rock and roll. I got a voice message from uh, his name is, what the hell is his last name now? Rick Rick Southwick here in our marketplace. He's the broker. Um, by the way, if EXP hears this, I think you guys are fucking retarded to have him running the, the brokerage here in the state of Utah. But he's made the decision to say, hey, listen, your social media is just not a fit for, for here in, in, in the state of Utah. And he laid out some reasons why it is. And yet I can't tell you those posts that I made or those things that I said, how many lives that it had impacted that would have never otherwise been impacted. So that's what started it. And then I started getting on the phone with a Brent Gove, who was actually a really great ally and advocate during that time. He's, he's a super cool dude, a stud. Um, he's like, dude, like, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Like, there's just like, they're not bending on this in any which way. So then they started setting me up with Jason Guessing and then Vicky Bartholomew reached out to me personally, had conversations with them. And then as we went through that process, like I, I was, I'm very clear on what my values are. Like number one is health and vitality. Number two is love, warmth, and compassion. Number three is appreciation and connection. I mean, I'm very clear on what I value. And once I started going through and how I achieve that value too, because it's a definition, right? How I define love, warmth, and compassion is probably going to be different than you, Mike, right? It's not the same exact definition. Right. And what I realized was, is even though it appeared that maybe we had similar values, me and EXP, it was very clear that my definitions were way different. And I had to make a choice. And I remember because uh, Vicky said, hey, listen, give it another couple months. Let's watch your, your, your social media. Let's make sure that it, it becomes uh, kind of watered down and a little, you know, a little under control, so to speak. And I had a very good conversation with Brian Casella. And I said, Brian, listen, I know that you're going to EXP. He was going to be under my downline, uh, which, by the way, he's doing fantastic with the company as well. And he said, dude, Colton, like, I'm going to move on with this opportunity, whether you do or don't. But if I were you, I wouldn't fucking do it. You should never change who you are just to fit inside of an opportunity or a company. And that's coming for someone that's inside of the company that's a really great friend of mine. And so that was the decision I had said, you know what? He's right. I'm not going to change 
my core values and what I stand for because it doesn't line up. It just has to equal that, listen, we're not a fit for each other. And then I had just continued. I made a couple of videos about my experience and, and like I've always done, shared who I am and what I stand for. And even what my belief is on the company, I do think even though there's opportunity for money, I do think it's a very dangerous company at the same time. And I was open about that. But when I shared this, I knew that it was burning the boat. I knew at that point that there was no going back and that, that they would reach out to me. In fact, I had several people reach out to me and ask me to take the content down and that I should just talk to the executives directly. And I was like, no, I'm done. I've already made my decision. I've moved on. Here's my experience. Here's my story. And my goal is not to keep people from going to EXP. In fact, I tell people that all the time. It might be a fit for you. I don't know where you're at in your life. But my goal was to share my experience because that's how I've always done it on social media. Good, bad, or otherwise, I just share who I am and what my experiences are, what I stand for. Then you make your choices based upon that. I hope it impacts your life to a positive. And that's where we are today. Now I fell into the opportunity shortly after to partner up with uh, a guy named Zach. We launched our company. We built out a whole freaking office space that is actually four months behind, but I wouldn't have built that space out, which is freaking epic for our real estate side of things to grow our brokerage and for what we're doing with our online brokerage. Yep. So tell me about where you're looking to take that. So our goal, I truly do believe that, um, I do believe that we're kind of in the, I don't want to say dying, but we're in the older years of our industry, kind of like travel agents in, in a way, like realtors are never going away, but it sure as hell is shifting how it's always been done before. And if you look at child travel agents are today, they're still great companies. One of them here locally is called Getaway Today. They fucking crush it and they have still brick and mortar and they just make a ton of money selling Disney packages and different travels and things like that. But easily people could hop online and do that same thing on their own, right? I don't know how necessarily the fees work in the travel agency today, but I'm very aware that our industry is kind of in a dying industry as far as real estate agents go. Look at Realogy, the company Realogy, prime example. They own Century 21. They own ERA. They own uh, Sotheby's, right? Look at Remax. Have you seen – we've had a fucking fantastic year in the stock market, and they are down dramatically on their stocks. How many – and I, I would really love to see where Keller Williams' public evaluation is. That would be awesome, even though that information is not available. But I feel like you're seeing a lot of agents leave those companies because those models just are kind of broken. And you're even seeing Keller Williams make shifts today with opening their expansion brokerage. They're really putting a focus on, we got to be a technology company. Even Gary's really roared his feathers and saying, you know, God help you if you've been at eXp or whatever. But the moral of the story is, is the real estate industry is changing. And so how we see it happening is we want to help realtors focus more on their brand and discover and decide now, where do they want to work? Do they, do they need an office space? Truth is, most agents don't need an office space today. They're working at coffee shops. They're working from home. They're working on the fly. They're moving and shaking. And maybe they do need a conference room to go into. But for the most part, they don't want to have to be centralized. Yes. So what our goal is, is, hey, subscription based, you pay $400 a month to have your license with our company. We're going to have virtual trainings for you over and over again. We're going to have we got our prospecting summit coming up in November. That's for our, our local company and our members, and even people outside of the company are flying in from Florida, North Carolina, paying to be at the event, right? But our goal is to create that opportunity for agents. And then we also want to encourage them, hey, split your money back into creating your brand. Put your money back into getting coaching and training with a lot of the infopreneurs that are available today, because that's another industry that shifted over the last five years. There's way more coaches and trainers that are available. For us to go invest in so our goal is it's four hundred dollars per month to join our company then it's 99 dollars per file that you close our goal is to build it to ten thousand agents over the next eight to ten years and then sell the company and go from there we believe that we can do that and um part of that is is not only do we want to build it to ten thousand agents just to hit that revenue but we want to impact as many realtors lives that believe the way we believe, that see things the way we see things. Not not to get the whole market, not to be number one, but to impact those people's lives that we can impact. And we're enjoying it. Yeah, talk a little bit more about like, not necessarily the, the disintermediation of, uh, of realtors, uh, but like where you see this going, because you talked a little bit about like how obviously technology is making a huge impact on, um, on how the business is done, but what do you see on the horizon then for agents? Great thing. I think there's two things um, that's going to happen and we'll, I'll do it in relative to the revenue structure of realtors today. 
Okay. I don't think realtors are going away, just so you know. It's just not going to happen. But I do see technology shifting how business is done. I think that it will be very tough for tech tech companies to really own the real estate industry. Um, it's hard to create that proprietary information. Like I see Keller Williams working on it now, but I think they're like five years too late on it, to be honest with you. And we'll see. Even Gary said, hey, who knows what's going to come out of this? But my point is, is how we use technology today. In 2012, I think I listed and sold over 40 for sale by owners. I did like 70 or maybe it was 57 transactions that year. Um, but every deal that we did, we had to fax or scan our files, like print it off. We had the little arrows that pointed sign here when we'd fax it over to someone. That doesn't exist today. I can literally do the whole thing from my phone, right? How I did marketing in 2012, which was only six years ago, was way more direct mail, way more postcards, way more flyers, way more. Now I'm getting on Google AdWords and Facebook and I'm retargeting my database for 10 cents of you versus 34 cents for a postcard. So, so it's just shifting how we do business in a big level. And I think that there's a lot of people, gratefully, I was born in this time just old enough to see what life was like without a lot of technology, but young enough to really be accidentally good at technology. Whereas if you look at people 45 and above, even sometimes 40 and above, they just struggle with it, even though they know it's important. And then you look at 50 and above, especially in the real estate community, they're just fucked. Like they just don't get it. They can't figure out why it's not working for them anymore. So I think that we have to take a look at that and say, okay, it's shifting. So what is that going to do to shift? I think you're going to be able to allow people to, to process more files and, and do more transactions. And you'll see two strategies come out of that. One strategy is going to be reduce commissions. We're already seeing it in very many parts of the country. One company I can think of is here locally called Homey. They are doing deals for 1500 bucks, no matter the size, and they're taking 250 listings a month right now. They're crushing it as far as transactions. They're not profitable by any means, but they are, they're, they're disrupting the market. So I think you'll see even some big teams, some big producers take on more volume, and I think you'll see commissions challenge. I think you'll see more consistent four, four and a half, maybe even 5% is on the high side of commissions taken, and then you'll start to see it very common. And how many of you guys have seen this watching live or replay? You're seeing more and a half, more two percent and two and a half percent BACs offered across the board. Have you, had you guys noticed that in your market at all? More lower commissions offered offered on BACs. Yeah, I, th I think that you definitely will see the commission challenged. Um, if it, and it's, I mean, honestly, if we're if we're being fully transparent, it, it's been challenged for a, a lot longer than that because I mean, sure. especially if you're employing Zillow or any of these other lead generation platforms. Um, you know, there's an expense involved with that. So even if even if you say you're getting, you know, three percent or six percent, you're not really getting three percent or six percent. Yeah, you're right. And they're taking a larger and larger chunk of that um, because those of you who are, are are hooked on Zillow like we are, right? It's it's crack. It's crack for our agents. And by the way, um, if you haven't gotten, if you're a team leader and you have, if you've not got involved with Zillow, I would recommend that you not do that uh, because once your agents are hooked, it's it's very hard to get them off. Um, but they're, so they're, they keep raising their prices. The leads are good, man. Listen, I'm not going to argue that. Um, they own so much data and they're providing, they're giving the consumer the value. And so I'll give them kudos for that. But the reality of it is as they raise prices, we're, that, that obviously is putting a downward pressure on commission. Right. And so while, while it looks good on paper, three or 6%, that really is going lower and lower and lower and lower. So you're right. Yeah. Yep. And you're going to see it not only with the commission charge, but the cost per lead. But I think that's the other side of it. Um, I think that there's going to be a select individuals, and this is the approach that we're taking with our sales division, is we're actually going to create an awesome experience and we're going to charge more. We're already doing it, you know, regularly charging seven and eight percent with our processing fees, keeping four and a half, five and a half percent on our listing side. And it's I, I think that you can I, I think if you can create an amazing experience, there's a huge opportunity for that. When I was in Miami later last year. I was talking to a couple of just really successful individuals at this nightclub and they were saying, listen, I'm so focused on what I'm creating. I don't have time to do it myself way when it comes to real estate. I would rather pay more to have an easy, smooth, awesome experience versus trying to save money because someone can do it for less or I can do it myself sort of thing. It just doesn't make sense for me. So I think there's going to be a huge opportunity for that, for that type of clientele and that type of service. But I think it requires amazing customer experience, not customer service, customer experience. Because how often, Mike, have we had great customer service 
and our clients were still pissed off at us, right? That happens. But there's been a lot of times that you've had terrible customer service, but yet the experience was amazing and they became your number one fans. So we have to focus on is giving amazing customer experience so people are willing to pay it, they're willing to talk about it, which takes us to the idea of how we continually create that experience before, during, and after the transaction that people feel a part, people feel a part of the WR tribe. Like they feel a part of a movement, they feel a part of our message to make a difference, even if they're not directly working with us at that point, so much that they send us referrals because they love what we have to offer. And then we have to discover today's market, how are we gonna deliver that message? So it's really more about creating a network of people that believe you're the god or the goddess of real estate if you really wanna stay competitive going forward. And that's always kind of been the theme, but you have to be even more conscious and, and focused in creating that today if you wanna stay in the sales business. Right. And, and I think that's I think that's probably the most important part. Decide which way do you want to go with the future, and then create that brand. Be addicted to Zillow and pay higher and higher fees, or charge more and more fees for your service and create an amazing experience for people in your tribe. Yep, for sure, man. And so, okay, so I don't know if you're seeing it in your market, but our market is definitely starting to cool off. Um, and 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 so I, I believe we're in the middle of a shift. And if you if if you don't see it, you will. Um, so what I want to know from you is, um, given the fact that you've been in it since 2005 and you've kind of seen uh, what happened in 2008, right? Um, what are you What are you recommending to agents right now as the market starts to cool off a little bit? How do they get ahead of the shift? Cool. Yeah, I think it's important to know a couple of things. One is the market is shifting, whether that's long term or seasonal. It's absolutely shifting clear across the United States, and we've known it was coming for a while. A couple of indicators. We know that every about eight to 10 years, the market has a pretty big correction. It's been 10 years since we had the market crash in 2007 and eight. So we know that. Um, the stock market, look at where it's at lately. There was lower earnings reported in third quarter. You're seeing, I mean, the last couple of weeks, the stock market's been pounded. So that's, that's affecting it. You look at where interest rates are today. They're continually going up and prices are up. So not only are prices more expensive, but rates are up. So affordability to purchase homes is becoming more and more difficult. So there's no question that the market's shifting. Listings are staying on longer. Um, you know, deal more. How many people are having more deals fall apart right now, right? You have to sell the home a couple of times, it feels like, because of, because of stupid stuff. So here's a couple of things that I, I think that you have to really focus on. Number one is you got to create absolute certainty in yourself every single fucking day. Like you've got, because this can be kind of scary for people. And if you let that fear take over and let the mind create this story that, dude, what if it doesn't work out? What if the market repeats like it did in 2007? What if I can't afford things? Blah, 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 right? So number one is you have to create absolute certainty that you're going to find a way to succeed. You've got to find that purpose bigger than you of why you're willing to do the things that you don't like or want to do. I think that's number two that you've got to do. Is you've got to be willing to do even more of what you don't like or want to do because that's what you do to get results. This idea that I'm going to go do things that I like to create the results that I like is fucking just just insane. We can't think that way. The most successful people on the planet, they do what they don't like even though they don't like it, even though they don't want to do it. I don't love waking up at 4, 35 o'clock in the morning. I don't love prospecting. I don't love going to the gym, but I do love the results that come from it. I do love the money that flows in. I do love health, having health and vitality. So we've got to get addicted to that. Number three is, is we've got to, I don't think outwork the competition, but we have to work consistently because I, even though hard work is usually important, there's a lot of successful people out there that don't necessarily work extremely hard. So that's not, not necessarily an ingredient that's needed, but an ingredient that is needed is consistency. It's no longer who I know that's gonna make the difference. It's who knows me. Who knows me and what my movement is and what my purpose is, purpose is and what my, what my mission is. And if people can know that, I can, can deliver that consistently, I'll have more and more people come to me. Um, number four is we've got to continue to retain our focus. And the way we do that is by owning our morning and owning our nights and then revisiting our focus several times throughout the day. Too often we're having realtors run by the seat of their pants. They're not getting really focused on the outcomes they want to create for the day. Or worse, they're creating massive uh, lists of tasks to get done. 
And I don't know about you, Mike, but it seems like that motherfucking task list keeps growing. I can do everything. And then there's more to still do at the end of the day, right? Uh, the next thing on the list is you got to be able to manage your state of emotions. And this kind of goes back to number one, which is create absolute certainty. But there's really three stages of emotions that we go through. And, and there's two majors. There's the feel good zone and the feel bad zone. The feel bad zone is boredom, discontent, anger, fear, impatience, worry, doubt, disappointment, hate, anger, or, you know, clear down to fear and, and hatred. But then there's the other side, which is which is love, appreciation, and peace, and excitement, and exhilaration, and, and tranquility. And inside of that, there's two major spaces. And I, I would dare challenge you guys on this. How often do you actually feel peace and tranquility being in the real estate industry? Or does it feel like you always got more stuff to do? You always feel a little anxious. You always feel like you haven't got everything done. So number one is feel more peace and tranquility and manage that state. But number two is, is crank up the volume on your enthusiasm. Get excited with the market shift and get excited with the opportunity that's in front of you. Get excited that you're willing to do what others aren't willing to do. Get excited with, with, with everything you have to create in your life and in your business. And I think if we can follow those steps, you're going to be fine because you change your state of emotion. You'll change the story that's told in your head. Some people are telling a story that the market's shifting, that listings are going to take longer to sell. It's going to be harder to make money. There's more competition out there. What if I don't do as well in 2019 as I did in 2018? What if I, I'm losing money? Uh, and that story then debilitates our opportunity and the strategies that we use. But when we get excited saying, listen, dude, the market's shifting, that means I've got opportunity to take market share and I'm willing to do even more of what others aren't willing to do, which is call my prospects three or four times a day, which is prospect an extra hour or two a day, which is to, to, to maybe get refocused on what my purpose is and get really hungry and obsessed over that. Now, all of a sudden, that energy propels us. It's like, it's like momentum. An airplane does not all of a sudden go 500, 600 miles an hour. That happens at 32,000 feet. At first, it's got to get its engines rolling and it's got to go down the, 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 the runway and then it's got to take off and then it picks up the altitude and then it picks up the speed. That's momentum. That's what we have to generate from the inside for ourselves. And I think one more thing, the last thing that, that realtors and just people in general need to do is you've got to manage your cash flow. Too many realtors are going to get burnt with this market shift, not because the market's shifting, because they didn't manage their cash flow when the market's been great the last several years. Too many realtors haven't experienced the downward market, and so that they got their ego in the way saying, look at me, I'm doing awesome, I'm making a bunch of money, and they gave very little credit to the market. They didn't manage that cash flow. Now, you're seeing cash flow come down for a lot of realtors, but what's not coming down is their expenses. They have their lease payments and their, 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 their rent payments and their Zillow lead costs and all these different costs that are associated with business. Their revenue is down, but their costs are not down. And that's going to put more pressure on a lot of agents, which I'm grateful for because they're going to collapse. A lot of people can't create the certainty and they're going to collapse. And that creates opportunity for me. Yep. Absolutely, man. Listen, dude, this has been awesome. And, and, and um, I'm going to tell you a secret and I hope no one else hear this because I'm going to tell you how to prevent disintermediation as a real estate agent. So come really close, man, because I don't want anybody to hear this. Okay. Create valuable content and put that it out. Hard. So listen, realtors are consumers. Um, buyers and sellers are consumers. The person that's putting out valuable data is going to stay relevant. Bottom line, Zillow is the number one real estate search site on the internet because it provides valuable data. Mm -hmm. So you can, as a real estate agent, you can provide valuable data. It doesn't have to be through the form of showing people houses online, but it can be giving people tips and strategies on how to make a good offer, how to win in a, in a, in a multiple bid situation, right? And, and so, I know that you are in alignment with that because you've been creating content and creating followers and consumers for a long time now, right? And so you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's where it comes back from. It's no longer who knows you or you know, it's who knows you. And, and when you create that content and that value, people are going to know your name. They're going to know your brand. They're going to know your message. They're going to know what you stand for. I think further along with that too is not just create content, but valuable content, like you right. said, because- I mean, a good example is BuzzFeed.com. They were really great at creating content and they had a lot of viewers for a while, but their viewership has gone down because their value of content people have caught on to and it kind of sucks, right? So it's no longer just getting attention, it's getting intentional attention. 
right? You got to get intentional about the content and the value that you're creating online and you got to do it. You've got to absolutely do it. Absolutely. Bro, listen, I could talk to you for another hour, man, and you have freaking just crushed mm -hmm. it. And I appreciate your, your transparency, your honesty. Um, I can tell that the, that the experiences in your life have molded and shaped you into a, in a fantastic human being. And, um, and, and just am, really appreciate you, you, you sharing today, man. Awesome, man. I appreciate you being here. I mean, life's not happening to us. It's happening for us when we choose to see it that way. And I mean, you could sell a lot of houses. You could create a lot of content. You could do a lot of shit here on your mortal experience. But if you don't enjoy the process, if you don't enjoy everything that's going on, the wins and the losses, then it, was, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> we got to enjoy the process. Absolutely, brother. Hey, listen, how can people connect with you, man? Like it, I, I, you're a fascinating human being, obviously. And I, I know people are going to have more questions. I've got a whole line of questions down the right hand side of my page right here. And, and so I'm sure people are going to want to reach out to you and ask you questions. How would you prefer people connect? You can check out uh, the WGRAcademy.com. You can check out fearlessagent.com. You can search Colton Lindsay on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, uh, the WGR. Follow me on Instagram. Check any one of those. Slide up into my instant message, into my DMs. Um, but one of the things that you can, you can do is definitely make sure you're following me because I'm always going to create more value for you guys. And just so you guys know, I'm going to help you make more money for sure. That's not a question, but more than that, I'm going to help you enjoy the process. I'm going to help you find the fulfillment that a lot of you might be missing along the road because you deserve it. Love it, man, bro. Thanks so much, man. We got to reconnect. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, Colton. Thanks. Awesome, dude. Cool beans, man. Dude, thank so you.